the Bibbles, JDR back with another goddamn video. And today's fucking video is gonna be show and tell time. God damn it. A lot of you fucking devils have been asking for it, so here the fuck is. They wanted to see it. And this is gonna be Cannibal Corpse bootleg vinyls that J Dog owns. Some people have said, yeah, can you show them like your Cannibal Corpse collection? I'm not gonna show every single Cannibal Corpse record I have because it's, I mean, it's, it's a fucking lot. I was going through it. I have, I mean, hell, this is probably gonna be a decent, uh, definitely an acceptable fucking length of video just showing the bootlegs I have. But I have uh, at least a version of every single Cannibal Corpse album on vinyl. But like most of my own, like say say like uh, Tomb the Mutilator, I, I own the original, I own a repress, I own two different picture discs, the original picture discs, the repress picture. So that's four right there, just a Tomb the Mutilated. Uh, but at least of every single album I own, fuck, I might even own a picture disc of every album. If, if, if there is a picture disc, like I think like Live Cannibalism, there might not be a picture disc of it. Pretty sure there's not. So like I don't own that. But um, the, all the albums, I think, uh, well, the new album, Violence on the Magic, I don't think that came on picture just yet either. But like, for example, like Skeletal Domain and shit like that, I own a, 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 at least, I think, just one color vinyl and a picture disc. Uh, Red Before Black, same thing. So I wasn't going to show every album. And it's because it's kind of like, you know what the fucking albums look like or you can easily find it. That's another reason why, like, because as you guys know what I've told, like, I love fucking bootlegs. And this is kind of why, too, because let's say this video gets 600 views. I guarantee you, there's going to be at least 300 viewers that at least some of the records I'm going to show, they've never even seen before. So they're, they're cool and they're collectible, you know what I mean? So if it's like your favorite band or so, which Cannibal Corpse is my favorite band, it's like, I still understand it. Like, why wouldn't you want to collect your favorite band? I, I, I think boots are fucking awesome. And then, they, then they, when they, especially when they got original cover art and shit. So with anyways, with no further fucking ado, let me start. And the first one I'm just going to grab from you is um, called The Beginning of Cannibalism. Pull out. This one's about five years old now. What I really liked about this is this is the this artwork you see. This was their demo shirt back when um back when just their demo was out before the album was out. All they were selling was their demo tape and this this artwork on T-shirt. And so that fact they got it used on LP, I thought was fucking awesome. And it's the just their uh, is suiting for this because they're it's their what's on this LP is side A is the 1989 demo and side B is their first live show ever, March 22nd. March 22nd, 1989, in Buffalo, New York. This is on Rika Death Records, limited to 250 copies. And as a lot of you guys know, you comment, Rika Death Records definitely puts out the best fucking bootlegs, hands down. There's some one off guys that don't really like to do the little bootleg here and there. But there's a guy in Germany, I believe, I think he's from Germany, at least that's where I got and saw mine, that uh, they've done some extremely nice bootlegs, but they don't seem to do them consistently, like Rika Death. Like uh, the Black Sabbath box set I own, I own a, a triple LP Black Sabbath box set, I forget, who, I don't even remember, I'm not sure who did it, but I'm pretty sure that came out of the U.S. Um, it wasn't by a regular person that has boots, though, at least not that I'm aware of, but that's like one of the nicest bootlegs I own, it's a... Uh, um, Box up. But as far as consistently doing records on a regular basis, you can't go wrong with Reek of Death. Next. Butchering Chicago, 1992. And check out this fucking badass fucking artwork. And this is, yeah, Butchering. So it's live August 19th, 1992. I remember, it's been a while since I listened to this, but I remember this sounding very good. To like the sound quality being really good, and there's this is limited to 250 copies as well. It says. Colored vinyl on this is fucking killer as well. As a matter of fact, why isn't it in a picture to sleeve? God damn it, must have been on a picture of sleeves when I got this. So we're gonna just do it right off fucking camera. Check out that fucking splatter, though, devils. Like 1992, so that was fucking. Either right before Tomb of the came out, or I think there's Tomb of the Mutilated songs, or right before or after Tomb of the Mutilated. I believe you had the Cryptic Stenches on here. So this is right, okay, so this this is that set. The only song, Addicted to Vaginal Skins on here, and the Cryptic Stench. So those are the only two songs on here that are on, um, on uh, Tomb of the Mutilated, and this this must be it. I remember Chris announced them, like, this could be on our upcoming albums, coming out in a few months. Um... 
And then, he, so I think he says that first for Addicted to Vaginal Skin. And I think for Cryptic Sense, like, you want to hear another new song, guys? Um, and then, so, 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 two songs. So, all the rest of the songs are Butchered at Birth and Eaten Back to Life. So, I mean, guys, with this cover art, it, 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 like I said, I remember it sounding really good, too. It's been a while since I listened to it, but I remember it sounding really good. And, like, that vinyl color, like, how the fuck? And if you're a Cannibal Horse fan, how the fuck could you not want to own that? But this, uh, this is an oldie, though. This is not 10 years ago, but probably about seven or eight years ago I got this. So, long Here's another. This is actually might be my favorite cover art of fucking Cannibal Corpse bootlegs. This is Dismembering Dallas, 1993. Obviously, homage to uh, Tomb of the Mutilated. I mean, look at that. It's the reverse. You got the fucking dude getting sucked off by the female as opposed to the guy eating out the fucking females. Plus, he's a pretty fucking, pretty fucking awesome. Leave the comments, Devils, so far. How many of you have seen these LPs or not seen these? And how many of you own these or do not own these? Uh, this is an oldie as well. I think I might have got this after Butchering Chicago. But this is over five years for sure. Five five to seven years. More than five years, but probably no more than seven years ago when I got this. And this is another Reek of Death Records. 250 copies. Backside. And this one is a double record. I actually, fuck, this one's not in the plastic uh, polys either. And actually, fuck, was that my last one? I'm really low. Fuck, I got, got to order. I got to do a bags unlimited order, devils. I'm down to my last three picture this polys. But I'm going to change this one on camera too while I show you. I forgot what color this was even on, but fucking sweet as fuck. Check that out, devils. So, yeah, if you're a Campbell fan and you collect vinyl, I just don't understand, like, like, because there's some people out there that bitch about bootlegs. I just don't get it. Like, what, like, why wouldn't you want to have that? Like, like, if you're a diehard fan I and mean, if you're a collector and you collect vinyl and you're just a diehard fan of the band, like, why the, how could you not want to own these? I just don't, I don't, I don't get it. It just makes no fucking sense to me. So, I don't know why people bitch. Again, I've already stated, people say, like, Oh, well, because bootlegs are ripping the bands off. How is doing a 19 fucking 93 live show that I guarantee you the band doesn't have the, the, the recording themselves? And I also guarantee, if, let's say you hand them a tape. Here's this recording. I re hey, I was at your show in 1993. I recorded this. Here's a tape. They're going to be like, oh, this sounds like shit or hey, I don't like this, whatever. Regardless, they're not going to put it out. So how is it you doing a live show of their stuff, paying homage to your favorite fucking band, whoever did it? How is that ripping the band off? That doesn't make any fucking sense. Ripping the band off would be this. Violence Unimagined just came out, right? That Well, not just came out, but that's the latest fucking album. Let's say it came out, or even just any time, any of their albums. You fucking buy it. You scan it in. You dub the fucking CD or LP or whatever. Basically, you just do a replica of the original product, and you're selling it. You're now competing with it, with the, with the official. So you're stealing their sales because some people are, are unknowingly buying your replica. So, yes, now you are ripping the band off. Now you are ripping the rep, rep, record label off. That's different. I'm not saying that. Who the fuck would want to own? I would, yeah, I wouldn't want to own that. That'd be fucking just, just, just fucking junk. But um, owning, yes, a recording that there's no way they have. And if they did, no way they're going to put out themselves. And it's in small quantities, like just collectible small quantities. It's not like they're doing 5,000 or anything. Who gives a flying fuck? Another fucking banger for you, devils. This one's dead and buried and rotten. Also some badass fucking cover art, right, Devils? And this is uh, live March 31st, 1994, Amsterdam, Howland. Limited to 250 pink vinyl on Rika Death Records. Oh, uh, well, this one isn't a fucking clear... Uh, this one is uh, not too old, maybe a couple years old now. I think I got this around around COVID time, maybe maybe just pre COVID, or maybe pre or post COVID, but right around you know either pre or post is when I got this um, record. So not not too too old, but I'm sure it's long sold out because they did come in through hells. That's how I got this one as well. And I bought mine, and I think they sold out like in. We sold all our copies in like a week, 
we never got a restock or anything. I'm sure they're sold out. And then um, I've never seen them since. So I mean, you could probably find it on eBay and Discogs not too, too hard. But um, it, it's you're probably going to pay a decent price. Probably not 100 bucks or anything. But probably maybe 50 bucks or so for the time frame. Is about, I guess you probably have to pay. You get it? This one I got. This is an oldie. I got this one definitely over 10 years ago. Double LP. And it's called uh, Force-Fed force fed Live Bleeding. And this is uh, Live 1994, Tennessee. Tennessee, USA. Doesn't say the exact date. Must not have had the date. Not, but just 1994. Last two were the Barnes. All right, holding up, Devils. You guys own these ones? Seen these ones? Know these ones? Any, any, any of the above? Seen them? Have them? Own them? Care? Don't care? Double LP. Uh, see, these ones are... Oh, I only got, uh, only got one plastic sleeve yet, so these ones got to stay in some white sleeves until I get more picture of the sleeves, goddammit. It's this one I never switched over either. They're still in the fucking lame-o dust covers. Plus, since it's the double, I don't want one record in a fucking plastic sleeve and one in a goddamn... Dust cover that looks cheese ball as fuck, right? I want to junk up the collection, so I'll have to wait. I'm gonna have to do a bags unlimited order, or oh, there another you know two three hundred uh picture disc uh, sleeves. And then I explained to you guys in previous videos that's how I like to store my colored vinyl and picture disc sleeves. For the guys that don't remember, can't, can't remember. So looking for example, when you're flipping through your records, I store them on the back side so no rerun. You see what color you have. Especially if you own more than one copy of the album, you see why you own more than one copy. Oh, they're different versions. Makes sense. This is another fucking oldie, and this I know goes for pretty fucking high amount of money. But this one, uh, this is over ten years ago too that I got this, and this is actually one of my fucking favorite demos too. This is the very last recording with Chris Barnes, and that is the created a kill, created a kill demo on vinyl. If I'm not mistaken, it was advertised as, it doesn't say on here, it was advertised as only 200 copies made to create a kill demo recorded in Tampa, Florida, 1995. But yeah, I fucking love this demo. It's basically the um, pre-vile tracks with Chris singing. It's got totally different uh, lyrics, different song names. If you guys ever haven't heard this, I fucking, yeah, this is fantastic. Must fucking own. But I have seen this on eBay and shit go for over $100. Uh, several times too. So yeah, if you're gonna get it, it, it is definitely hard to get. I do know that because I yeah I got this 10, 11, 12 years ago. It's, it's it was a while when I got this. Quite a while. It's definitely long gone. That one I did have in a picture of sleep. And if that wasn't cool enough for you, devils, seem to create a kill on uh, LP. Like, oh fuck yeah, it's goddamn colored vinyl on there. Check this shit out, Ron Ross. Let's see how you fucking, if you know this one. Or if you knew about it or not. Not only do I have a color vinyl, there's a goddamn picture of this for it too, goddamn it. Boom. There's limited 250 copies. This came out after the vinyl. But it's been quite some time since this came out, too. These did come in through Hells, and they sold out very, very fast, too. That's how I got the picture disc. And um, I don't know what they go for or whatnot, but uh, long gone. At least I would assume so, because I can't imagine other distros just sitting on them, because they sold so fast for us. So I'd imagine whoever else was carrying them. This is another one I got very... This might be one of my favorites, too. I remember the sound quality on this being absolutely fucking amazing. And it's funny, in Hells recently, somebody did a bootleg CD of this with different cover art. I don't know why they didn't use this sick-ass fucking cover art, because this cover art is absolutely awesome. But as far as all the live recordings, this I would say, I don't, I don't even say probably, I would say this is definitely my favorite recording. The sound quality is, it's not as good as Live Cannibalism, the official release, but it is not far from it. Like, it sounds like, holy shit, this got to be an official release, or intentionally recorded for a potential official release, but this is a bootleg. And it's called the Unreleased 1994 Death Board Recording. And it doesn't even say where it's recorded. But yeah, it sounds fucking amazing. And check out this badass fucking cover.
But if you haven't heard this and you want to get at least the recordings, I know this, this has to be, this, I got this, this is another 10 years or so ago. And I have seen this on eBay as well for well over a hundred dollars. So it's going to be hard to get this on LP, but hells has even got, I we might even have some left. I don't know. We got it a few times. There's a, a guy that bootlegged it on a Digipack CD. It doesn't have this cool SR. I don't know why you wouldn't just use the same cover art. It's got a shittier cover, but nonetheless, it's the same audio. This show on a Digipack CD. Uh, I forget what the guy is from. I think he's from like Lithuania or some weird country. That's where at least we got him from. And um, definitely worth having. We've, we've restocked it a few times. Each time we got him, we, I think we got like 20 in at a time. And they sold out right away. But I think we, because we did recently get them again, we might have a few left. So if you do want to get this recording, um, you can go over to Hells and get that if we still have them. And, and like I said, the, this record, this is, it's fucking awesome. Chris's voice, everything. I'll show the backside. It's fucking phenomenal. This would be my favorite. Like, I, I absolutely love this record. Shit, I forgot what the color of the fucking vinyl was even now, what it looked like. This. Fuck, it's not even in, um, you know, any more picture to sleeves. God damn it. I'm all out because it's in these lame old fucking pussy ass white dust covers. Who needs that? It's fucking hill jack as fuck. Pretty fucking sweet looking, right? Uh, I don't remember how, does it say how many of these are made? I don't even remember. Um, I said I got this so goddamn long ago. It doesn't even say on here. I think 250, 300 or so is what it was advertised as. Less than 500 for sure. But um, yeah, this was this was another one I got a long time ago, so I don't fucking fully remember. But I recommend this. I told you guys, see, this is just boots I'm showing you. Like I, like I said, when I have a huge cannibal collection, I have a huge cannibal collection. Like in totality. Of bootlegs and officials, picture this, everything. I definitely have over 50 Cannibal Corpse LPs. Probably pushing 100, but not quite 100. Like, is that, it's, it's, it's a lot. Like, I have a lot. And let me show you the last one. I got two more. But I'm going to show you the, uh, the one we, I think we might even have some copies left in uh, Hell's. I got, got this just a few weeks ago. But here's another fucking banger for you. From this being a little bit of a later recording. Out this one too, I remember sounding. It's been a little while since I listened to, but I remember it being soundboard quality too, sounding absolutely fucking amazing. And uh, this one is called Hammer Smashed Holland, and the cover art is fucking awesome too. Wretched Spawn era. Live in uh. How, yeah, live in Burgum, Holland, June 19, 2004. So, really nice one. And like I said, I remember this. It's been a what? Uh, this is an oldie, too. Fuck, I got this. It's not a 10 year, but definitely a seven to eight year old one. And it, um, I, it's so, I, it's been a few years since I listened to it, but I remember it sounding extremely fucking good. This is the version I have on a blue splatter vinyl. These ones, I did put in picture just sleeves. That one I got to. Double LP. So, very, very cool. Must have there if you're a fucking Cannibal fan. Also, Two Devils. If there's uh, any Cannibal vinyls, I think there's a few Greek ones or whatever. I'm not too interested in the acetates. There's that Greek guy. He was always, at least for years, he was. He's doing a lot with Merciful Fate. Um, he's selling these limited acetates where he was just, he was cranking them out. But the quality was shit. And the, the, the cover art was just trash. You can just tell he was really just cranking stuff out for money. Not really interested in those, but if it's actual good fucking uh, vinyl release, and I think there is something. I saw it on eBay a couple weeks like I got a bid. Maybe it's like Live Poland or something. I think it's like a newer live set. Bottom line, what I'm getting to, if you know of any fucking Cannibal LPs, because I'm showing you all my boots. This is all the last ones here. This is the last one I just, this is the last one I just purchased as well, too. This is the last one I'm going to show you. But what I'm getting at is if you know of any other Cannibal boots that I'm not showing you, let me know. And if you, if you have a link, even fucking better, because I will, because you can see, I buy them. I will definitely go out and buy it. Uh, whether it be e eBay or how your personal collection, whatever. 
But, uh, and I think this one here I'm going to show you guys, I think we have a few left in Hells. Sounds really good. And I fucking love the artwork. And this one was really special to me when it came in because, uh, as I got to tell you, the very first Cannibal Corpse record I ever heard was the Vile album. And the first uh, death metal record of all time I ever heard was the Vile album. And this is from the Vile album. And you can see the Vile character art. So I thought, oh, man, this is fucking awesome. Title Stab Hack Slash Kill, which is really fucking cool because that's from the song uh, Perverse uh, no, Puncture Wound Massacre. That's the opening line. Stab, hack, slash, kill, stab, hack, slash, kill, stab, hack, slash, kill. You know, uh, that's how the song goes. And uh, I wish they'd play that song live, too, because it's just under two minutes long, too. They could easily squeeze it in. Fucking love that song. In fact, it says, limit to 300 copies, goddammit. Again, I, I, we might be sold out of these now. I'm not sure. But if we do, we only have a handful left. And I definitely do. If you're a cannibal fan, again, I recommend it. They all came out on gray vinyl. At least that's the only versions we got. That's what I bought. I already put my picture to sleep, too. But I got this. We got these about two weeks ago. And last I looked at the shelf, I saw the other day, it looked like we had like maybe seven to ten copies left on the shelf. So once they're gone, they're gone. Double vinyl, like I said. Uh, thoroughly enjoyed it. Thought it looked fucking awesome. And I'm definitely fucking glad to own it. So, yeah, this was the latest to the collection. Hope, looking forward to adding more. Like I said, if you guys know... I know there's at least for sure one Cannibal LP I'm missing, because like I said, I've seen it on eBay. And it might have been a Greek guy selling it as well. Maybe it was the same Greek guy or whatever, but it didn't look like an acetate. I think he said it was limited to like 300 copies or something, and maybe it was like live Poland in 2017 or some shit like that. It was definitely later. Now, it looks good in the fucking photo, and I definitely wanted and I bid on it, but I was out, out fucking bid. So um, uh, I know I'm missing at least that. So there's at least one other record that I'm missing. But if you know of others, like I said, uh, let me know if you know where to, uh, who has them for sale, even fucking better. Just send me over the fucking link and I will, I'm just going to fucking go out and buy it. So, uh, yeah, that's what you see devils. Like, like I said, every official on my own, not, I don't, I'm not going to sit there and say I own every single version, every single color. I definitely don't every pressing or every cannibal. I'm especially in the last five to seven years. They really got fucking carried away. Finally putting them out. And the posers caught on. Oh, people like cannibal. Let's, let's put all this and this one. And now we can even do this one. So it's like, whatever. But, um, so, so, so but I own at least a version of every single uh, album that they did on vinyl. So just want to show you the boots because, like I said, they're more obscure, more rare. And uh, like I said, put in the comments, which ones have you seen, not seen? Have you not seen that? Fuck, have you not seen any of them? Like I said, that's kind of the coolness, you know what I mean? Just cool collectible shit. That's what's, you know, that's what's fun about fucking metal collecting records. Yeah. So, you know, just cool, rare fucking shit. Kind of like collecting baseball cards. But, yeah, you get to fucking, uh, you get to fucking listen to them too. So that's it for this one, Devils. I just, like I said, I'll do other ones on other ones. I got a Slayer one I could do. Someone asked me to show my hemorrhage vinyls. I don't have any, I don't think, I don't think there is any uh, bootleg hemorrhage vinyls, but I'll show my officials on those because it's not, it's a little bit more of an obscure band. And you know what I mean? It's not as big as Cannibal Corpse and the pressings are smaller, et cetera, et cetera. So it's a little bit more, I guess, cool to show. You know, showing Cannibal Corpse butchered at birth on LP, you, you know what the fuck it looks like. It's not that, it's not that, uh, I don't know, exciting, I guess. So. Anyways, that's it for this one, Devils. Any questions, comments, whatever, let me know what you've seen, don't seen, and which, what, which ones am I missing out on? Leave it in there, goddammit, and I'll see you in the next one. Later.